Welcome to In Touch with Durham County. I'm Deborah Craig Ray, General Manager of Strategic Planning and Innovation, Public Affairs and Special Projects. I'm joined by my co-host, County Commission Chairman Michael Page. Hello, Deborah. As our regular viewers know, we use this TV show to interview our Durham County Department heads, staff, and community partners to share information about the many valuable programs and services. Today we are pleased to introduce two new faces of Durham County government. In our first segment, Jody Miller is General Manager of Community and Public Safety. She joined us shortly after the beginning of the year. In our second segment, Jay Gibson is General Manager of Environmental Stewardship and Community Prosperity. He's been with us for about 18 months. With the management reorganization recently announced by County Manager Wendell Davis on this very show, we felt it important to hear from these key leaders who are critical to our overall operations. Chairman Page, let's begin our conversation. Absolutely. Hello, Jody. Thank you for joining us today. In the introduction, it was noted that you are fairly new to Durham County government. Uh, let me say publicly, welcome to Durham County. And if you would now tell our viewers about your prior service in Virginia, which is really my home state. Great. Well, thank you both for the opportunity to be here. I'm thrilled to share a little bit about myself and, and talk about my work to date with Durham County. As you mentioned, I'm a native of Virginia. I've spent the last 17 years in local government work, 16 years serving as the deputy city manager for the city of Williamsburg in Virginia, and then prior to that working for the city of Virginia Beach. I'm an ICMA credentialed manager, which is ICMA is the International City County Management Association. That's our national professional uh, association for public management. I'm also a Virginia Tech Hokie. I have my master's degree I'm from Virginia Tech. I also went there for my undergraduate work as well. Fantastic, fantastic. So Jody, what led you to the familiarity of Williamsburg and then to apply to join Durham County government? Well, as I mentioned, I'd spent the last 16 years or so in Williamsburg, and I've loved the opportunity of serving the citizens of Williamsburg. But I was at a point professionally where I felt like I really needed to grow and stretch myself. And so I had started looking for other great opportunities in the, in the profession. Um, Virginia and North Carolina are known for being well-managed uh, states and communities in regards to public management. And so I had really sort of focused on Virginia and North Carolina. Uh, the opportunity in Durham County presented itself, and uh, I applied and was had the good fortune of being selected to come to Durham County. Right, we're glad to have you. Absolutely. And on that same note, what led you to kind of leave city government to move to county government? Well, as I mentioned, I was looking for that next step in the career and sort of that next challenge and, and uh, sort of stretching myself professionally. Having had the opportunity to serve an urban city in Virginia, I thought, you know, the next opportunity would be working for a large sort of county government and, and maybe even a different state. And so that, that led me to North Carolina. And uh, when I saw the opportunity to come to Durham and, and I saw the um, skills and experiences Durham County was looking for uh, in their next uh, general manager, I thought, you know, that excites me. I want to be there in a community that's doing this type of work and it fits well with my skills and experiences. Mm -hmm. So what have been some of the more noteworthy differences between, say, how Virginia government is managed and how North Carolina government is managed? Well, there are lots of similarities. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, both are known throughout the country and being well-managed states and, and uh, have local governments that are well-managed in their communities. Uh, but there are some, some dr dramatic differences. I would say probably the biggest one is, as you're both aware, Virginia is a commonwealth state. So cities and counties are independent localities and they provide separate services. In some cases, a city will provide um, separate services, a county will provide its own services, and then the state even provides some additional services. It's a more integrated collaborative approach here in North Carolina where specifically counties are mandated by the state to provide certain services and there's that more of collaborative approach here. That's probably the biggest, biggest change. Um, Another one that comes to mind uh, that's a, a big difference from Virginia is the local government commission and the work that it does in, re in relation to local governments here in North Carolina and the oversight that it provides. You just don't see that same model in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have just started the county administration course at the UNC School of Government. 
How is that helping you transition from one state to another? And I'm sure there are many similarities and some differences as well, if you'd like to expound on that. Well, I've been very fortunate to be selected to, to go to the county administration course at UNC School of Government this year. It's a very competitive program to get into, and I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity. I think for me it's provided a really good framework and context for local government work here in North Carolina, and that's, that's so helpful being new to North Carolina local government. I would say the other real benefit uh, to going through the course is the people that I'm getting to meet through the course. I'm getting to meet other local government professionals here in North Carolina and building that network of colleagues so that as I have questions or challenges that come up, I can reach across that network and really have a good base of support and look for good information moving forward. As the general manager of community and public safety, please mention some of the departments that are included in your portfolio. Well, I have uh, some departments that are direct reports to me as general manager. Uh, that includes the fire marshal's office, the emergency management office. It also includes the youth detention center, as well as emergency medical services and the criminal justice resource center. There's a, a joint city E911 emergency communications department, which I sort of uh, have joint responsibility with with the city, one of the many shared services between Durham County and the city of Durham. There's also several offices or departments that I serve as sort of a liaison role for for the county. Uh, those include the sheriff's office and the detention center, um, as well as the Durham court system. Now, um, I would imagine the task of overseeing so many departments and then those shared services that you mentioned um, can have its own challenges. Um, talk a little bit about your management style and, and addressing that, if you don't mind. Sure. Early in my career, a mentor and a friend of mine told me that local government work was about people and relationships. And I have grown to really understand and believe that to be true in my work in local government. And so uh, one of the things I pride myself on is the relationships I build with people in the work that I do. And so my management style tends to sort of fall into three categories. Uh, the first one is a facilitator. I like to bring people to the table and different perspectives and try to build consensus on issues and problem solve. I'm also a convener and uh, what I mean by that is bringing different points of view to the table uh, and perspectives as we deal with service delivery, as we deal with community problems and figuring out sort of who needs to be at the table to tackle some of these really challenging issues in the community. The final thing, uh, the final area I would sort of describe my management style around was being a coach. I really work to uh, support the staff and the team that we have here at Durham County. We've got some wonderful, dedicated professionals on our team here in Durham County, and I really work to support the excellent work that they're doing. I help them problem solve when needed, and also help support and coach them professionally so they continue to grow and stretch themselves as well. Can you tell us what has been perhaps, I won't say challenge, I'll say your biggest opportunity since you've been here in Durham County? I think being part of this great transformation that we're seeing in Durham County government, um, everything from the managing for results work, which I know here on the show we've talked a lot about, and being part of that evolution and development of that work, um, being part of the strategic plan refresh process, which is currently underway, and being able to help guide a team as in that work for the goal three area of a safe and secure community. And then I also think being part of the new or reorganization to really align, to make sure operationally we are aligned with the county's strategic goals. That's a transformation in, in Durham County government and it's exciting to be part of it. One project that I know that you're managing is our strategic plan refresh. Specifically, if you, you oversee goal three, which is safe and secure communities. Briefly, what is being done to enhance our goal three and what can our community look forward to? Well, we started our work this summer. We've actually currently have that work underway where we developed a team, uh, goal three team, with employees from all of the departments that I mentioned and offices under the goal three team. And we've been really working over the last two or three months to look at the core services provided in order to um, 
create a safe and secure community. We're also looking at how those align with our strategic goals and priorities. And then what, are, what is the data telling us about trends for the future? And so we've been spending a lot of time around those issues and developing objectives for what we'd like our community to look for, uh, look like in, in the future. That, a lot of that work that's being done this fall uh, is focused internally to the organization with the next step to take all the work that we've done to date and take it to the community in the winter and springtime of 2017 in order to get feedback and guidance and input on where we're headed as a community as we think about what does a safe and secure Durham look like. So more to come on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. At this point, do you feel like you've completely adjusted or are you still in the honeymoon phase of uh, <laughs> learning about Durham? Oh, still very much in that honeymoon phase of learning. Every day is a new experience and I learn so much every day. Um, it's been wonderful to be part of a community where uh, everyone from the Board of Commissioners to the executive leadership at the county, employees, and the community overall have been so welcoming and so supporting of, of me and my family during this transition. But I very much feel like I'm still in that learning phase. Well, it's been a real pleasure to chat with you today, and we're certainly looking forward to having you on again. Um, is there anything that we haven't touched on that you want our viewers to know? Just to, to thank you both for this opportunity to share a little bit about myself and my background and the work that I'm doing for Durham County um, and being part of this team. I'm grateful to be here in Durham and working for the county and being part of this transformation. Thank you both. Great. Well, we're certainly glad to have you. We're going to have you come on again and talk about the great work you're doing with the strategic plan refresh. So stay tuned to that. Sounds good. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk with Jay Gibson, General Manager for Environmental Stewardship. Please stay with us. Body language. Without saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back. Joining us now is Jay Gibson, Durham County's General Manager for Environmental Stewardship and Community Prosperity. Chairman Page, let's continue our show. Let's begin. Welcome, Jay, to In Touch, and, and let us start by sharing with our viewers a little bit about your prior service and qualifications. Certainly, Chairman Page. First, thank you to you and Deborah for having me here this afternoon. I certainly appreciate the invitation to join you and our viewers. Uh, in terms of my qualifications, I have over 20 years' experience in state and local government in a variety of roles. Uh, my experience has been primarily focused on technical leadership, provision of community infrastructure, planning and support of economic development. Uh, in terms of academic credentials, I'm a graduate of North Carolina State University in civil engineering and I've also completed the School of Government at UNC Chapel Hills Municipal and County Administration program where I received the George C. Franklin Award as most outstanding. Right. Fantastic. Well, what led to your previous position in Chapel Hill and uh, for you to apply to join us here in Durham County? That is a wonderful question, Chairman Page. I was long aware, having been a longtime resident of the region and of North Carolina, of the Board of Commissioners' commitment to revitalizing and reinventing Durham while still maintaining that sense of heritage and sense of place that binds the community together. And when I looked at that, coupled with County Manager Davis's innovative approach to public sector leadership, that made it a most attractive professional opportunity for me. Great. So you were hired last year as Director of Engineering and Environmental Services. 
now as general manager for environmental stewardship, you seem to have a real variety of services in your portfolio. Would you mind sharing that list with us? Certainly. Well, it is a very diverse list, and yet at the same time, there's some great interplays between them. We have economic development, county engineering and environmental services, county soil and water district, our registrar deeds office, and then a number of combined city-county joint departments such as building inspections, planning, and geographic information systems or GIS as the acronym goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I would imagine the task of overseeing so many diverse departments is, can be pretty challenging. Um, talk to us a little bit about your management style and how you oversee that. Certainly. Well, first, very blessed that in all these departments, all these functions, we have some very, very talented and dedicated professionals, and that has certainly made the challenge much easier as I've continued to learn and continue to grow into this new role. I think in terms of a leadership style, what I would say is it's really about learning and adaptation. First, trying to learn and understand what core role, what core services is that department providing? What niche are we asking them to fill within the broader con context of what services and, and what outcomes we want based on what our citizens and commissioners are asking us for as a staff? And then once I understand that, what are the talents in that team that we can bring to bear on those desired outcomes? When we find that, I really find that my role is one more of coaching or cheerleading in some cases and in other cases perhaps of helping that team move past an impediment to their progress so that we are hitting the strategic goals and outcomes the commissioners have charged us with. I know that one uh, critical portion of your portfolio includes uh, engineering and the management of key building and renovation projects. One actual project is the judicial building renovation. Could you describe that project for us? Absolutely. That's going to be a really great project, Chairman Page. Uh, as you may be aware, and many of our viewers are, that building at, on East Main formerly housed the jail, our sheriff's office, and our court system. They moved in 2013 to occupy the new Justice Center over near the ballpark. And so now, uh, with the approval of the commissioners, we've undertaken a project to renovate this building, and it's going to be a great project. The building is about 170,000 square feet total, over seven floors. And when we're done, we are going to create a wonderful new home for many of our county functions and county departments. Uh, to that end, we're going to take the building all the way down to its skeleton, to its structural steel, and totally renovate it. Uh, it's going to be really nice. We will be adding brand new systems, building systems, be it heating, electrical, and others that are much more efficient than those of 40 years ago when the building was first built. We are adding a new exterior skin and some interior arrangements that will greatly help with increased natural lighting in the building, which will be good for the occupants and make it a more inviting place for people to work and visit and do their business. And then we will also be doing uh, other things to help it be high performing. We'll have certain uh, innovative technology features in it. We'll have a wellness center to help with our core wellness programs for our employees, which helps with both a better workforce, a healthier workforce, as well as managing cost points, which is important to all of us. And then finally, uh, it will have some really great outdoor spaces. We're going to recreate sort of a plaza feel on the Main Street side, which uh, was one of the core goals the commissioners had charged us as a staff with, helping continue the vision the commissioners had of revitalizing, continue that revitalization of East Main further eastward. And another key project our viewers may have heard about is one of the bond projects, and that's the renovation of the main library. What will happen there during that expansion? Certainly. Uh, it will be similar in some aspects to the judicial building project I just outlined. We will be taking that building fully down to its structural skeleton. A twist on it, though, is that we're going to expand this building. And typically, people think of an expansion, you're building an addition like on the back of your home, for example. In this case, we're going to go vertical. Our, our preliminary investigations found that the building was capable of supporting a fourth floor. So we will be adding structurally a fourth floor on top of the existing three-story building. And with that, expanding it from approximately 65,000 square feet today to 84, 85,000 square feet when we're done. This is going to enable some really, really neat features. For example, a STEAM center, which engages science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So it's a twist on the STEM we often hear 
this is going to be a fabulous place for our young people to come and learn about careers and gain skills to help them and knowledge to help them in that path. We're going to have a greatly expanded children's section that will be about 50% larger for the younger children. We're going to have some great services for adults in terms of literacy, in terms of an expanded computer center. So for example, if someone needs a place to use a computer to apply for a job or to gain other skills, they will be able to do that even though they may not have a computer at home. So it's going to be a great benefit. Uh, we also will have a 300 seat auditorium, if you will, that was sort of flexible where it will have seats that move in and out. So it is really a multi-use space but can be used like an auditorium style setting for performing arts. And then finally we're going to revitalize the outside as well. Currently the building, when you walk in, it's very emblematic of its time. It's a very inward focused building. We're going to have a public plaza and some other public programming spaces outside so on these wonderful fall and spring days that we get here in Durham our library staff can have people there and do programming outside that will be very inviting for all segments of the community. Very, very That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So reflecting on your portfolio we noticed that the area of economic development is included. Can you perhaps share a general philosophy regarding the importance of this area? Certainly Deborah, and that's a great question. This may sound a bit odd, but I believe that economic development may be the most crucial service we can provide in the county. And so let me explain for those that that may sound a little unusual to. The county is, provides a very wide and diverse array of services to our citizens from public health and social services to funding for school and school facilities to public safety to environmental and quality, environmental quality programs and there's many, many more as well. All of these programs require money to provide the high level of services that our citizens expect and desire and to continue the environmental protections and other things that make our community such a great place to live and has drawn people to us. To that end, our economic development program is crucial in providing a diversified and stable tax base that we have the funding resources necessary to provide these resources for our residents. I would also add that we've seen many changes in our manufacturing tax base. We were, have benefited from our proximity and relationship with Research Triangle that's allowed us to take things from our area universities and bring them to commercial fruition. At the same time, we're seeing changes. Downtown Durham is no longer a manufacturing hub as it once was. That means many of our residents don't have the quality job they once had, particularly our high school graduates. So economic development is also a core uh, cornerstone, if you will, in our commissioner goals of helping each resident have a quality living wage job that they can be self-sufficient from. Yeah. Very good. Um, so would you also talk very briefly about sort of a new direction with economic development um, and particular area of Durham, the Junction Road area? Absolutely. That, that's going to be a great project and we appreciate the commissioner's vision, Chairman Page, on helping us forward that. Uh, there was an assemblage of land, approximately 100 acres, and with the commissioner's approval, staff is undertaking a project to create an industrial hub in East Northeast Durham to help a historically underserved portion of our community with jobs. As we mentioned a moment ago, we've seen folks lose their job in the downtown manufacturing. We see a place here for people who may not have desire or skills to work out in the triangle, but they may want a quality job that we can create an opportunity for companies to come with warehousing, logistics, and light manufacturing and have opportunity for uh, many of our citizens to get a quality living wage job. Mm -hmm. We absolutely look forward to that. So Jay, it's been a real pleasure to speak with you today. Is there anything that you'd like to mention that we did not cover? Chairman Page, I would just like to thank you and Deborah both for the opportunity to have joined you today and tell you what a great time it is to be a part of Durham County. We're glad to have you Absolutely. with us. Absolutely. So we're going to have you back to talk about the work that you're doing in strategic planning and in some other areas in a few months from now. So thank you again. Thank you. We're Chairman Page. We've had another great show. Another great show. Thank you. Absolutely. It was great to highlight two of our outstanding county leaders. And as we wrap up, I can't wait to see who we will talk with next month. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and continue to help our viewers stay in touch with information that they most need to hear. And we ask you to please join us next time for In Touch with Durham County. Cheers. <laughs>